is Dr. Abby Olulade of Sharp Steely Medical Group. Good morning to you, Dr. Olulade. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for joining us because I think a lot of people have questions. You've sort of given us an idea of some of the questions that people have been giving you. And, and one of them is, is it safe to go to the beach for the 4th of July? So it is safe if you can make sure that you are maintaining the social distance, if you can make sure that you wear a mask. Um, it is, of course, difficult to do that very realistically. Um, so if you can keep those measures um, and staying, include, which includes also staying within your household group, then it's considered a lower risk. And what about travel? Because that's a big one. This is typically a, a year, you know, a, a holiday throughout the year that we see a travel uh, tick up because the kids are out of school. Are you hearing a lot from your patients about whether or not they should travel and what are you recommending? Yeah, you know, this is a question that a lot of people do have. Understandably, it's the summertime, you know, just the fact that it's beautiful outside calls out to us to go enjoy it. Um, but the important thing to realize is that traveling increases your chances of contracting this, especially if you're traveling to an area where coronavirus is spreading, which is a lot of surrounding areas. Um, and also when you come back, even if you're young and you don't have symptoms, you can certainly spread it to people in your household or in your community in general, especially those that are vulnerable. So it's recommended that you, again, you know, follow the guidelines that have been set out by our county officials, which is to tr stay within your household um, this weekend and try not to interact with people that are not known to you. What about pools? Uh, we heard from the CDC on, on pools and whether or not a virus can spread within a pool. What, what are you uh, telling patients as far as that goes? So there's no evidence that the virus is transmitted through water at this time. So, you know, just by swimming in general, there's no evidence that you will contract it that way. But again, you know, when you are at a pool and you're around other people, you know, there's large respiratory droplets from talking, even breathing, you know, um, and if you're at the pool and enjoying a cocktail and those uh, measures that we talk about start to break down where you forget to put your mask on, then that's really where the risk lies. Yeah. I know there's a there is a growing concern out there that since a lot of the firework shows are shut down, more people are going to be doing the sparklers and doing their own fireworks. Um, I know people have been hearing them going off in their neighborhoods. Is, is there talk about preparing for that and really uh, having a, a surge of awareness for people as to the dangers of lighting your own fireworks? Yeah, you know, I'm really, really glad that you asked this. That's, you know, that's, with all your questions, such good questions. Um, yes, the urgent cares and ERs are already seeing an increased um, surge in people visiting um, because they're feeling symptoms of COVID. So even in young people that don't end up getting admitted, we are seeing significantly increased rates. So please try not to come in and increase those rates by having these injuries um, that are that can be very uh, prevalent with you know lighting these um, sparklers in your home so um, we really want you to be careful and try not to increase the burden on our on our healthcare workers again you know um, personal protective equipment hospital capacity these are all things that we need to maintain the integrity of our system um, to be able to continue to provide care to you in our community. So it's important that everyone remembers that. All right, doctor, great safety tips. Appreciate it. Dr. Abby Olulade, thank you so much. Appreciate you joining us this morning.